Hello, everyone, and welcome to tonight's uh, part two class of Mixed Media Roses. Um, I'm your instructor, Adrian Hodge, and if you missed the uh, first class, part one of this class uh, from two weeks ago, uh, you can find that on YouTube by searching the, the title of the class and put in part one. Um, so we are picking up where we left off at the end of that class and just let me know if you have any questions and I can I'll, I'll definitely quickly review as we get started here. So I'm going to switch to my tabletop view and go over supplies. So we're aiming towards this is where we left off right here, but we're aiming towards something that looks something like this by the the end of the the class tonight. Um, okay, but we we left off last week right about or two weeks ago, whenever it was. Our our schedule got a little mixed up. Um, but we are using the Artist Loft watercolor pencils. Uh, we used some sketching pencils and an eraser. We'll definitely want our eraser on hand for at the end of the class tonight so we can erase our pencil lines that we're seeing um, from our sketch. And you are going to want some watercolor paint brushes for the watercolor pencils to add water and blend those out. You'll want some paper towels. Give me just a moment. My phone is on do not disturb, but <laughs> the one person who gets through that, that block is texting me anyway. Okay, so you're going to want some artist loft tape to tape down your your mixed media piece. And we started with that in part one. We're using the artist loft watercolor paper, the seven by ten inch paper. We have quite a few supplies on this list, so give me just a moment while I work through them all. Uh, we also have the artist loft illustration pens, and those have the 0.3, the 0.5, and the 0.1 nibs. And then one kind of wild card supply was this Winsor & Newton uh, white ink that you can purchase at Michael's. It's not uh, the Artist Loft brand, but we're going to use that to add some embellishments uh, to the end of our piece and also to bring out any highlights that we want might want to bring out in this painting and we're going to add some kind of sparkly star splatter here um, so that is just something extra that I added because I use it so much in my personal work and when I was creating uh, the piece for this class, I really wanted to use some and I thought, well, hey, they sell it at Michael's, so I'm going to put it on the list. So we've got that. And then you'll just want um, some sort of like, I use a ceramic dish. I have a bunch of little ink well dishes that I use for my ink. And so you can use that or you could use um, um, a little plastic watercolor tray as well would work. And I believe that is it for the supplies. And then the photograph that was included in the uh, supply list, this photo of these roses, you should have that to either print out or refer to on a device. And I think that was it for all of the supplies. So let me know if there was any supply on the list that I didn't talk about or any questions about supplies. Okay, and uh, don't forget to tag your work with those hashtags, make it with Michaels or Michaels classes. And you can follow or tag me on 
uh, Instagram at Adrian Hodge Art. I'm also on Facebook, Adrian Hodge Fine Art. And here's some of my work using primarily calligraphy ink on my business cards. All right, so we're going to dive in and get back to it. Um, one class that I referenced a lot in the part one version of this class that you might want to uh, check out if you are struggling with drawing the uh, roses to get started on this, or if you're you're just joining and you you missed part one and you're trying to dive in, one thing that was not covered in part one, and that was just how to draw a rose. Um, but I have had a class, it was called Flower Fundamentals, Drawing a Rose, and you can find that class on YouTube. And that's really helpful to be able to um, just render the three dimensions of the rose and navigate the, the ins and outs of capturing the, the value and um, all, all those nuances about sketching a rose. We didn't really go into that. We kind of just sketched our under sketch for this painting and began layering the watercolor pencils and starting to blend those out. And we also talked about foreground, middle ground, and background a little bit. Like we started with the background with our watercolor pencils and began layering the, the colors that we were going to add water to to blend. And if it hadn't been for the end of the hour of the class in part one, I probably would not have added water to this just yet. I probably would have gone ahead and covered the entire piece with the first layer of color before I added any water to it and started to blend it out. But just because it was creeping up on the end of the hour with the last class, I wanted to just get to the point where we were blending some of it out. So I went ahead and did that. But we're going to have multiple layers on this. One of the optional supplies that I had put on the supply list was a hairdryer. So you're welcome to grab a hairdryer if you'd like to speed up the, the drying process of these layers. And I will admit that since I have multiple iterations of this piece from when I was practicing and, and playing with the supplies um, and figuring out planning for this class, it's likely that I will pull out one of these while I'm waiting for the layers to dry on here at some point during the class tonight. So feel free to use a hairdryer to speed up the process and get to where I am in your, in your mixed media piece here. And we also wanna have time for this to dry so that we can add the, uh, the pen and ink to it and yeah. Okay, so we're gonna just continue building up the layers here. In the end of part one, I talked about how there was a couple of different ways that you could go about this. And the way that I have found was the most successful after doing this a few different times was to really try to create volume in this piece and try to emphasize the idea of just weight and form on these roses. So rather than looking at the, the values just yet, I mean, I am looking at the values. I'm mostly looking at the colors that are jumping out to me and blending those colors and trying to create some kind of uniformity with those colors and then blending them in a way that makes them feel like one full weighted rose with some volume. So I'm going to take two different reds here to keep building layers on this rose in the center, and then we'll keep working on this one. But for some reason, reason I'm feeling drawn to add another layer to this one, probably just because I know it's going to, it's so dark and it needs to be darker than it is now. So I might as well build that up. So I'm using the side of the pencil to really just get a nice big layer of that color there. And we have to have a lot of patience with 
the watercolor pencils because there can be this real itching desire to hurry up and add the paintbrush with the water to them and see how they're going to look when they they blend it's sometimes kind of hard to visualize what's going to happen when we're just coloring with the pencils but resist the urge to do that too much because as soon as you add that water to it then the paper is wet and so then you got to wait until it's dry to add any more. So I think it's better to build up your colors first. And just have faith in the, in the process. So I might turn down my ring light a little bit. I think it's giving me a little too much of a glare on this. It's a little better. Hopefully, I don't think that's dark. It's easy to feel like it's dark in my, my house, but the desk is very spotlighted. So that's all that really matters. All right. We're getting closer to the the springtime when it's going to be daylight for longer. And I can't wait. I don't know about y'all, but when I can go for a walk at 7 p.m. and the sun is still up, that's a good, good time for me. Especially if you can do it in the sweet spot before the bugs know what's happening, before all the mosquitoes come out. Okay, so that's good for that, Rose. Let's start building up our color on this one. So this one is gave me some trouble. And I had to remind myself when I was working on the plan for this class that you know, we're, we're creating a bit of an illustration here. So with certain supplies, we have to embrace what's possible with certain supplies. And I guess I was looking for a little more realism with this rose than was coming across in all of my, my iterations here. I mean, it's gorgeous. I think it's like, looks really great in all of these, but I really had to embrace for the sake of time in these classes, a more illustrated version of this rose. So I am leaving a little bit of a gap here in between these petals, just because I want to put a little bit of a highlight there. And when I add the watercolor paintbrush it's going to bleed out but I can just let the water be a little more transparent right there so if there's any moment of your painting where you want to do that same thing that would be good or if you're applying this to another photograph not just this photograph if there's areas where you want there to be a highlight leaving it blank will allow the when it this watercolor pencil becomes paint it'll allow it to be a little more transparent right there but we also have that white ink on our supply list and hopefully you're able to grab a a bottle of that that's going to help us to push those highlights as well so if it gets away from us when we're bleeding it out and we lose the, the gaps in between there for those highlighted moments, that is okay. I'm following that spiral circular path with my brush strokes and with my pencil strokes, I'm maintaining the elevational path or the um, the contours of the form. So 
add another dimension to this red. Let me use this vermilion red on top of it. And there are moments where I feel like it, it's got a little more of like an orangey red happening. So I'm not going to put the vermilion all the way throughout. It's going to give it some accents with this other dimensional red. I have to say it really does help that I became so hyper-focused on this, this mixed media rose piece whenever I was planning this two months ago. I remember I had a little bit of a cold that weekend and I was just home by myself and I was just fixated on this for some reason. I kept trying it so many different ways, but now it's like as I'm teaching it, I definitely feel really comfortable with this image because I've already, <laughs> I've already done this so many times. Um, I'm going to do something different I didn't do with the other ones. I'm going to add some of this dark pink on here to see what happens if we add even another dimension to this red. Using at least three or four colors where you maybe would have thought to only use one color is always going to give you more fullness and dimension to your color. So always look for one more color that you could get in there to accent things. And obviously we're going to use some, uh, some black in here in just a bit, but it's not dark black throughout the whole thing, but the we're just going to do a little bit of gray in some of these shadowy moments as well. I'm not sure if I used the gray before, but that's another thought that just occurred to me as I was saying that is maybe we want a little bit more dimension to where the black is happening. And the darkest shadows are always going to happen right near the highlights so right at the edge of where those highlights are happening that means there's like a deep recess somewhere that's occurring and so near that recess the there's a moment where the elevation is higher on the rose it's like just like drapery just like folding pieces of fabric and that's what's happening with these petals so you can kind of anticipate where your highlights and shadows are going to be because they're follow that pattern. Okay, let's see what else we got. Orange rose over here to the side. This one. And again, we want to use a couple of different colors to make it multi-dimensional. Using the side of the pencil. Whoops. Throw that on the ground. Oh my gosh, and then it broke. Hang on. So I'm using the side of the pencil so that I can get a nice, even, kind of continuous tonal quality. So the way I'm adding watercolor. Okay, let's see. What other color can we add to this orange? We're going to use this peachy color that's called ivory. I might even add some yellow in there. And we can always do another layer once this first layer dries. So just like we've already added a second layer right there. But we just have to wait for it to dry to add our next layer. So it's a good idea to just go ahead and put as much 
nuance in with our first layer as possible. There's a little bit of this orange rose sticking out right there, and there's a little more of it up here too. Okay, and then I'll start to add, turning down my ring light even more because I feel like there's just such a glare on that, that yellow rose especially. I'm adding some of this ivory to the yellow rose. I'm also going to add more of my light brown here. Do a little bit of a scribble technique to get some of those those details to show up, those little veins that are happening. Although those are that's something we can put in towards the end as well. So if it's kind of sitting on the surface, if it's the most in the foreground, that might be something that we add last, like when it's totally dry, because that's going to get, it's going to bleed when we add some water to it with our paintbrush. So just keep in mind any details that you're adding. Really, this this set first and second layer should really be more about just building up color. It's hard for me too to not want to to stop myself from jumping to those details. So I just took my gray, and I'm speaking of building up here. I'm building up the gray that I'm seeing on the side of the the yellow rose. And a lot of these shadows that are being cast by the petals across each other. I'm seeing a lot of gray. I have a question for you, Adrian. Okay. Nancy asks, can you mix medias? Pencil, paint pots, tube color, question mark, question mark. Oh yeah, you can mix anything, Nancy. I love mixing all different things together. I'm even a fan of mixing things that people say don't mix together just to see what will happen. So, um, I mean, there are definitely certain things that just don't mix very well together, but everything you just listed, pen, what was it again? Pencils, watercolor, can you read it again, Chanel? What were the other mediums? Yeah, sorry. Um, pencils, paint pots, and tube color. Oh, yes, definitely. And then another question did come in. Um, how many layers for the finished product? Um, it really just depends, honestly. Like one of these examples here, which one was it? The one that I didn't use pencil on first, I just went right to it with the, I just do, dove right in. There's still a glare from my, my light, but um, that one, all I did was just go for it with the, the orange and the yellow, and I didn't do a pencil layer first. And I love how subtle that is. I love like how um, just minimalist and kind of dreamy both of those roses are looking like these look like they need more layers, but it kind of just depends if you feel like you've really captured the essence of what you were going for or you're satisfied. It's really up to you. And if you, you know, feel satisfied and like you captured the subject to your satisfaction, then you can stop wherever, honestly. Um, I just want to build up until I see like some, some contrast that makes things pop. That's kind of what I'm going for. So once I feel like I've captured all of the, 
the interesting colors on these roses and they have like a weight and a volume that I'm going for and um what else do I want yeah just some strong contrast but we're going to add that with the restriction pens and the the white so it really just depends on on your own satisfaction okay so now I'm going to look at these little in-between moments I've got my emerald green and my black and I'll go ahead and grab my yellow green and my olive green and just get these moments on the, the leaves built up here. And we talked about, you know, following the little curve on these details, how that just brings three dimensions to it. The more you, you push the, the contours there, it might be kind of hard to see that that detail, but it's there and it definitely comes across in the finished product. And there's just so much green on this yellow rose than you might notice right at first. This other one, there's not, I'm not seeing any green on that one, but I do want some more orange on this one. Some orange and maybe some brown for those shadows. So I'll do orange and this clay yellow for sure. I believe it's clay yellow is maybe what I want more than the orange, but mixed with the orange, that looks really nice. That actually gets really close to the shadow that I'm looking for there. Hopefully this isn't coming across as glary as I'm seeing it on my screen. For some reason, I'm getting such a glare from my light tonight. I'm wondering what it looks like if I turn it off. Is that too dark? Y'all give me some thumbs up or thumbs down. Is that better with my light off? Um, while you're waiting for that feedback, we did get another question. Okay, yeah, sure. What is the best base for water-based mixed media? What is the best what for base. water? Base? What is the best base for water-based mixed media? Yeah, that's what the question is. Hmm, I'm not sure what you mean by base. Um, like the paper or the... Like, yeah, like paper, canvas, question mark. Oh, yes. Um, watercolor paper. Or mixed media paper. And we got a lot of, it looks great. Okay, good. When I turned off the light, that looks better. Yeah. Okay. I think my hand is also like adding to the, the glare somehow. How about that? Just raised my main light up a little higher. I feel like I'm sitting here in the dark now, but I guess that that looks better. So and once I start putting my paintbrush and water on there, it's likely to look different. So maybe I'll turn my light back on in a bit. This clay yellow really accents this yellow on this yellow rose up here at the top very well. I feel like that matches that color beautifully. And so, yeah, I'm just really noticing like areas where there's a lot of strong light and strong shadow in the piece, in this photograph. And I wanna really push 
those dark and light moments and create some contrast. So I think contrast is really the key to something feeling really polished as opposed to um, feeling kind of dull or like it's missing something. And I've been teaching drawing and painting to adults for about 10 years. And in a critique, when somebody puts a painting up, you know, at the front of the room and we're all looking at it and trying to decide what it needs, nine times out of 10, they've played it really safe with their colors. If we're talking about that value scale from zero to 10, so absolute black being the 10, absolute light being the zero. And in paintings where I feel like it's missing something, they've played it really safe on that value scale and they've stayed in the like, in the middle of the value scale on all of their colors. Like, and I'm just speaking really generally about what I see in a lot of, you know, pieces where where it's missing something. And I always tell people to, you know, look for like, maybe you were, you know, waiting to put your absolute darks and your absolute lights in there, thinking that, you know, you didn't want to do it too soon. And, and that's good. And that's what I mean by playing it safe. But also, you know, why not just go for it and make it feel really bold here. So I'm looking at where those moments are in the the photo and there's a lot of areas where it gets like absolute black solid dark in these little crevices and shadows in this background moment right here in the background right here so like that's what we're gonna add our illustration pens and um and the white too to like make those absolute lights and absolute darks kind of pop here in just a bit before the end of the class. That's how we're gonna bring it home. So wherever you are in the process, adding those embellishments are really gonna make it pop. Okay, I think that's pretty good for another layer. And while I was talking, I added some browns and some blacks and all those shadows and some, some gray. And there's also, a little red moment up here that I just realized I didn't even put that in the other paintings, but it's worth it since it's in the photograph to go ahead and put that there. I think it's actually just something in the background that happens to be red. But we'll go ahead and give it a couple of dimensions. It's used to the carmine red and put some pink on it too. There's also a little splash of red moment back here in the background too. I left those out of the, the other painting example. I know, put them in. After all that time studying the other image, I ignored those two things. Maybe that's what it was missing, was that little pop of red. Keep our eye moving around here. Okay, so I'm gonna take my a medium round brush and I'm going to turn my light back on. We'll see if I want to turn it back off again. And my water and um, just start to blend out these layers. And I'm being mindful of, I'm leaving a little gap or a space between some of these shifts and colors so that I don't, you know, bleed this red into my yellow rose right there. So you can just clean your paintbrush on your paper towel. Before you mix it up and go to another color. And we're just using a generous amount of water to bleed these colors around, but also keeping them within the areas of those value shapes where we see that color. So like right here where I'm blending that, that clay yellow and that orange, I wanna keep it within the shapes. And 
that those colors are defining on that yellow rose. Otherwise, I'm just going to add, I'm going to end up bl blurring the whole thing over the yellow, and then you won't see the, the areas of yellow. And then I'm going to clean my brush. And on this one, I am going to go ahead and blur the whole thing together because I still want to create this volume on this one. And if it's too wet for me to add another layer, then I might end up just doing it to one of my other examples here. But some of these roses, the, the fuller, the darker ones, they really do require a few layers to build up that volume. And then I'm cleaning my brush again. I'm using the same brush so far for everything. And then I'm going to bleed those accents and those shadows that I added here. But again, being mindful not to just wash over the whole thing on the lighter roses because I want to keep that separation between the light part of the petal. If I were to just bleed that green all over it, then I'll lose that. I'll cover up that yellow area. And I want it to be a little white right there. But we can add those accents with the the white ink as well. So if you jump to any new color, like I painted that little orange moment a little bit there, then I want to clean my brush so that I'm not spreading that orange around on my yellow rose too much. And yeah, all those fine details that I put in with the pencil right there, I would just bled them all together. So it's really hard to hold off on those details until the end, I know. And I, I jumped ahead with it there. But that's okay because now, you know, that it's just a little more full. So it's really just a matter of seeing which colors are more transparent when you add the the watercolor paint and which ones we don't want to show up as transparent. Like it's okay that the the yellow and the orange shows up transparent because we want those to feel a little transparent in the, the painting. But like this green, for example. I don't want that to be that transparent. I want it to feel full. So I'll have to wait for that to dry and put another layer on that green or else, you know, we can always add the accent with the, the illustration pens. The illustration pens are kind of my, my catch all solution for when we start running out of time here in the next five minutes, <laughs> I'm going to start pulling it all together with the illustration pens and creating some of those contrasted moments. Okay, so let's build up this rose. This is the one that gave me the most trouble and I haven't even started blending it yet. But I don't think I painted it this way in any of my other examples, leaving that little gap. We'll see what that does this time. So far, I already don't like it. I'm going to fill in the gap, but I'm going to give it, give it a second and see if it feels like the right move before I hastily fill it in. Because once I fill it in, I can't go back. All right, I'm doing it. I'm filling it in. I think giving it a second like that definitely helped create some definition in between those petals. Like it didn't just blur them all together like what was happening before. 
because you know we want this weight and this fullness to the flower but I also want to see that kind of spiral from light to dark happening that was my thinking with that that method there Okay, so yeah, the first layer of color, I mean, this was just the first layer of color in a lot of spots here. It's really just about creating a base layer of a wash. Well, that brown is nice and full and dark. That is filling in that area for me, oops. Just bled some of that black, but ooh, I kind of like how it looks as it's bleeding. I'm going to let it bleed a little bit. I'm a fan of the natural, just striations and feathering and interesting things that water media does when it bleeds together. So I don't. pull those things out too quickly right away. Sometimes we can quickly think of them as mistakes and try to erase them, but letting those things happen can create really cool moments. So okay. So that is very wet. So I am going to do my little cooking show number here and go ahead and just move this aside and work on one of my other ones that are dry. So if yours is really wet, then you've got to, you could either work on two or three at once like I did. <laughs> That was my solve, or you can just wait, or you can use the hair dryer. I'm not peeling off the tape from the side of the paper yet, because if I did that while it was wet, it would rip the paper. I'm just peeling off the entire thing, and I'm going to move it over here out of the way for a second. And then I'm going to grab one of my other pieces, which are similar to where I've left off right there, although that one has a little more black in the, the shadows in between. So what I had done there was just build up the black watercolor pencil in those shadows and, and then blurred it with the, the watercolor and the paintbrush or sorry the water on the paintbrush and then let it dry completely so it looks completely different when it's dry so just keep that in mind okay so let's say you are right about here and you're like I'm just done with the the watercolor pencil I've built up as many layers as I possibly can and I'm just going to leave it alone because every layer that I do is not, you know, like you just feel like you're kind of done with the watercolor pencils. I'm just fast forwarding to the part where we use the, the illustration pens. So here's one alternative to creating some contrast with the watercolor pencils, building up continual layers. We can take these illustration pens and this white ink. So first I'm going to use my pretty big nib, my 0.5 nib. And I'm just going to go in here to all of these little shadowy moments, all of those places where I was starting to build up contrast with the watercolor pencils. And you cannot do this if the paper is wet at all. So you have to wait until the paper is totally dry to do this. And then we can start to build up, create this contrast just using the pens. And you could do this with the watercolor pencil, the black, and a paintbrush. 
but you can also let it dry and do it with a pen and it looks really cool. So that's what I decided to do and make this more of a mixed media piece and not just a watercolor pencil painting. It's mixed media anytime you are mixing more than one media. So here we've got watercolor and pen and then also some ink. If you've got collage and paint, you've got a mixed media collage. Even if you're just using, let's say you're drawing with a pen and then you've got a highlighter that you're using to add some color to it, mixed media. Anytime you're mixing media, you can call it, you can call it that. Okay, so those are some of the darker shadows and we can add lighter shadows with our point one nib. You could also build up maybe with like some stippling or some scribbling or hatching or cross hatching in some areas. But I find that being a little more minimal with embellishments like this goes a long way versus covering everything with a, an outline like this, but giving it just like some little some little accents like that is really nice. Maybe even on the edge of some of these petals. Oh, I'm still getting such a glare. Okay, so I think it, I think what's causing the glare is just how light part of the painting is and then how dark other parts of the painting is maybe. I don't know. Maybe I should stop looking at my Zoom screen. I don't know if it's bothering anybody else as much as it's bothering me. Okay, so yeah, same thing in all of these shadows. I can build that up with the black. It's really up to you, but it's an option and I think it looks really nice. Okay, so let me show you how to add some of this or where I might add the, the white. And so here's the one that I used for the, the promo for the class. And so I ended up just kind of doing this nice, even tone of reds throughout the the rows and then I added just the pen for all the black I didn't use any watercolor black and then I went in with my white and added some highlights but let me show you all the one that got a look got away from me <laughs> this is the one where I was like it really got carried away and I ended up filling in all of this with black pen and then I was kind of scribbling over it. It was getting a little little abs abstract there, but I like it. And that's what made me want to add the ink to the, the mix. Um, but for just a little bit of the, the white ink, let's see here. Okay, so I've got my... Oops, excuse me. I'm going to shake up my my ink a little bit here. And just pour out a little bit because I'm not going to use a ton. Okay. And then I'm going to use one of my fine liner brushes from from this set. And if I take my paintbrush and I just load it up with that ink, and then I hold my paintbrush over the, the painting, and then I hold it in one hand, and then I'm just going to tap it. Here, let me do it to one where there's no, no white on it, so you can get a more impressive 
So it just gives it these little sparkly moments. That really does something, especially on this one where it was kind of feeling a little underdeveloped by just adding that black with the pen. And then I can go to like all these areas where it feels kind of light already. And I can add a little highlight here, here, and just kind of bounce around. And put my highlights back in. And the beautiful thing about this, this white ink is that it is so opaque, you can water it down and make it a little more transparent. But it really just sits on the surface really nicely. And you can get this like crisp. highlight to happen that just really makes it pop. And you could definitely mix this white in if it was like still a little wet. What'll happen is it'll just kind of make things kind of, you know, give you a lighter version of whatever colors you're working with there. But you can use it to add some of these highlights back in, like if you accidentally filled in a moment that you wanted to be a highlight, you can do that. And then my other advice when this is totally dry is that you do the thing that I started to get carried away and do a little bit earlier. Let me get my photo back up here. Is put in these little veiny lines that are happening with just the pencil directly. And that's something that you can't do with, you know, cake or tube watercolors, but you can do with watercolor pencils is you can have this dry application of them mixed in with the wet application of them and that gives you a little more texture to these details all right any questions about any of this i know once i got towards the end of the the class here i kind of zoomed fast forwarded a little bit but you know, it's really just building up the layers to your satisfaction. Some of these have just one layer, these examples that I showed you. Others have probably three or four layers. This one probably only had about two or three layers because I think I realized after um, pushing, turning this one up to 11 <laughs> that I could maybe dial it down a little bit. And then, yeah, wait until it's totally dry to peel off your tape. Like, let me see. Let me go back to this one that I was demonstrating with before. It's still kind of wet. No, it's dry enough, I think. I'll go ahead and peel off the tape from this one. And then I'd love to see some of y'all's examples. And you can really peel off the tape whenever you feel like you're done with the, the watercolor. Um, part of the process. And if the paper is all buckled and, um, you know, wonky and it's not laying flat anymore, obviously, because we've put so much mixed media on it, uh, the way that you can get, get it to lie flat again is to just spray the back of the paper once it's dry with uh, some, with a spray bottle, and then just, you know, lightly spritz it and then put it underneath a stack of books or maybe a piece of masonite board if you have something like that. And you can get it to lay nice and flat like that. Um, any questions before we end the class or are we ready to show our 
There was one holding it up. Um, I was going to just ask you if you're ready for me to start switching that around. Yeah, go ahead. I just got distracted. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I think, Amy, I think you had yours up if you want to lift it up again. Oh, look at that, Amy. That is gorgeous. Is that watercolor pencil or are you mixing it with? Wow. What kind of paper are you using? Oh, I can't. <laughs> we can't hear you. Mixed media paper? Watercolor paper? It looks so smooth. You did such a lovely job. Hold it up one more time. I love that one. Really nice. Oh, that bottom rose. You outdid me, Amy. I'm so impressed. <laughs> The student has become the master. Oh, look at that one too. Wow, very impressive. Oh, I'm so impressed. Oh, that really pops. Please send some of these to me. Email them to me or tag me if you post them anywhere. I'd love, love to see them. If anyone else wanted to show, just lift up your picture and I'll switch. Oh, it's just a flash. I got a little lost in the background there. I know that happens. Okay. Very nice. Well, that looks like it's it oh, for okay. today. Oh. Well, thank those of you who did share, thank you for sharing. Um, what a great little class. That was so fun. And um, hopefully you have all signed up for the classes that are happening in March. I've got some really exciting facial proportion classes for adults and drawing adult facial proportions and kid children facial proportions. And then a premium class where I'll show you how to do a really cool ethereal cloudscape using the alcohol-based markers and I'm excited about that and then in April I'll go ahead and show this one because I just finished it if you liked this mixed media process I'm gonna be doing this in April using a very cool cupcake uh, image but leading up to this I'll do two free classes on uh linear perspective, one point perspective sketching, and then a, a class that will cover just sketching this image. And then uh, there will be two premium classes um, where we add the, the mixed media to it. So this was all uh, watercolor paint, but then also got some illustration pens in there to add some, some accents, but no, no white ink on that one, I don't think. Or maybe I did add, actually, no, I did. I did the white ink again on that one. I was like, well, I might as well. I've already used it on the mixed media roses. So that's coming up in April. It's a whole month long class of leading, month long of classes leading up to two premium classes where we do this uh, linear perspective cupcake. All right, thank you all. Have a wonderful evening.